Jesus. The burqa we refer to is the complete covering of the human face, leaving only a small opening for the eyes. We do not believe that we can justify forcing somebody to wear such a thing. To do so is a clear breach of a woman's human rights. It is not even clear if somebody is forced or if it is their own choice. Is it their own choice if they've been told from an early age that they must wear it? Women who choose to wear it have often been told they will be a bad woman if they do not wear it. We would say this is merely another form of coercion. It is not clear if it is a woman's personal choice to wear the burqa. So is the burqa really the problem? No, it's the symptom, and the cure is education and freedom from superstition. However, sometimes we do treat symptoms to alleviate suffering whilst the real cure kicks in. We were moved by a recent radio interview about banning the burqa, where a Muslim woman simultaneously argued that there was no coercion for her to wear the burqa and it was her choice, and also that any ban on the burqa would imprison her in her own house because her husband would not let her out of the house without it. Legal issues of false imprisonment aside, we felt deeply sorry for this woman. We don't want to create a law that would put her between a rock and a hard place, physically imprisoned by her husband if she does not wear the burqa, yet imprisoned by the state if she does because of insensitive laws. Any argument to ban the burqa has a counter-argument. If we call it oppressive, the counter-argument is that it is liberating, liberating you from the imprisonment you would suffer if you did not wear it, presumably. If you say it is forced, the counter-argument is that it is not forced, it is religious choice. If you say we are giving women the legal excuse to escape their oppressors by banning it, the counter-argument is that enforcing such a ban is also a form of oppression. If you say it has no place in free Western society, the counter-argument is that we are destroying their culture. If you say you are banning it to enable peaceful cultural integration and progression away from superstition, the counter-argument is that a ban does not work. Banning things never works. Well, banning drugs does not work, but we still do it. We ban them to try and stop our children being exposed to them and becoming addicted to them. We see the burqa as the same thing, as something that adolescents and children are exposed to and becomes addictive. It changes the personality of the wearer to destroy confidence and increase agoraphobia. The burqa is addictive. A blanket ban probably would not work and would produce all sorts of backlashes. There is nothing stopping us from banning a full face veil in any building or business where money is handled and there is a risk of armed robbery. Hoods and helmets are banned in such places. It is not unreasonable to ban covering the face in airports where passports have to be presented. It is not unreasonable to ban a full face covering where there is a high risk of terrorist activity and a man could be disguised as a woman. It is not unreasonable to ban a full face covering in a courtroom where a jury needs to see if somebody is lying. It is not unreasonable to ban a full face covering in a government job where it can hide your emotions and intent and makes everybody who is not a Muslim feel uncomfortable. Should a non-Muslim be hired or fired by somebody whose face you've never seen, who you are unsure is even the same person that has those rights over you? The voice is not 100% identification. Should your child be taught by somebody who never shows their face and does not pass on those vital facial expressions that are part of our social learning? And how should we ban it? The non-smoking ban works because people who smoke inside are asked to leave the premises. There are fines, but they're rarely enforced or needed. If the law says to do something, then most people will comply. A partial ban in certain sensible circumstances could work well. Non-Muslims have rights too. If we ban the burqa in those specific situations, but otherwise allow it to be worn as they wish, then perhaps that will be the first stage to removing this oppressive and divisive piece of cloth from women's lives.